a critically acclaimed adaptation of a beloved video game is a rare thing. <coughs> it's even rarer when that adaptation makes changes to the source material of that game. <coughs> 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 Oh, sorry, so when a Last of Us TV show comes out and is both critically acclaimed and acclaimed for the changes it has made, it's kind of exciting. This almost never happens for video games, and it's more exciting for a science guy like me because these changes both make sense and make sense. Case in point, fungus that can talk? Yeah, it's even cooler than you think. Gamer Chair Descend. Now entering the facility. At the time I'm filming this episode, the most interesting story change, at least to me, is an apparent moving away from fungal spores as the on-screen vector of infection and a movement towards this stuff. It's under the skin of the infected. It's what they infect you with via gross plant tentacle kiss, and it allows the infected to communicate over large distances. And like I said, Science lovers will be happy to know that this change in both story and focus is about as accurate as you can get. Here's why. When a fungal spore lands on a suitable substrate like soil or plant matter, it germinates into a long, thread-like cell called a hypha. As more spores grow and more hyphae connect, it starts to form a fungal root system collectively called mycelium. And this is the stuff you're constantly seeing featured in The Last of Us TV show. Now, we have an intuition that shroomies are what a fungus is, but mushrooms are just the fruiting bodies where the spores are made. The majority of a fungal organism is actually the mycelium, usually underground and invisible, absorbing water and nutrients like a tree's roots. And in fact, much, much better than a tree's roots. But we'll get to that later. You'd be forgiven in thinking that this weird fungus hair stuff is relegated to the underside of rotten logs or to those dishes that someone somehow can't take 10 minutes to do over the course of two weeks. But you couldn't be more wrong about that. You see, mycelium is more prevalent and more important than just about anyone realizes. Why don't you just do the dishes instead of being passive aggressive in front of hundreds of thousands of people? Because Ari, I'm emotionally immature and I review bomb TV shows that I'm already watching and already enjoying anyway because the story changes don't fit my preconceived notions of what it was when I played it all the way back when I was a teenager even though I, uh, all the changes were already there in the game. <laughs> Today's video is sponsored by BetterHelp. Hey there gamers! I'm award-winning science educator and Netflix Jason Momoa, Kyle Hill. You know, when I'm not sciencing, I'm trying to live my very best life. No, that doesn't just mean eating right and working out, but means acknowledging and taking care of the only muscle in your body that really matters. This one right here. Your brain is not a muscle. Get help that is better. BetterHelp. BetterHelp is professional counseling done with a licensed professional therapist online. After the service assesses your needs, Get matched for weekly phone or video sessions with your expert therapist. Log on to your account anytime to send the messages and change your counselor at any time for free. Don't sit in a waiting room. Don't get stuck with the only therapist in your area. Don't pay any more than you have to because you get access to financial aid. If you want to start living your very best life, if you want to start achieving your brain goals, try going to betterhelp.com slash Kyle Hill for 10% off your first month. Look, I can't say it's for everyone, but it could be for you. Get help that is better. Better help. Fungi are literally everywhere, and not just here on your screen. <laughs> they are critical decomposers of the environment that live almost anywhere there is moisture, even in a place like Chernobyl. Trust me. It is not an exaggeration to say that the ecosystem as we know it and plants as we know them would not exist without fungi and their extensive spread of mycelium. You see, over hundreds of millions of years, plants and fungi have co-evolved to produce the single most prevalent symbiotic relationship in all of nature. Mycorrhiza. Mycorrhiza is the term for a symbiotic, sometimes parasitic relationship between fungus and plant. There's fossil evidence to indicate that this relationship goes back hundreds of millions of years, almost as old as plants themselves. The evolutionary reasoning is pretty simple. Fungi don't photosynthesize, and plants are actually pretty bad at extracting essential nutrients from the environment. 
So in colonizing a plant's roots with mycelium so that carbon, sugars, and essential elements flow between them, the fungus gets the resources only possible via sunlight, and the plant gets the elements it needs but is bad at extracting. More than 90% of all studied plant families are mycorrhizal, and many plant species are entirely dependent on fungal networks. Symbiotic fungus can provide more than 90% of a plant's phosphorus, 80% of a plant's nitrogen, and effectively increase plant root mass hundreds or thousands of times. Now, it would be one thing if The Last of Us show focused on fungal root systems just because they are essential and everywhere. That would be cool and accurate, the best kind of cool. But the show goes one step further and says that mycelium can actually be a mode of communication among the human infected. And guess what? That's cool and accurate too. Fungi does allow for communication in a kind of network. And they can do a lot more than just act like some sort of fungal tripwire. Just like Bill and Frank used to make. Uh, oh. oh, thanks. I'm going to cry again, Aria, now. Give me a minute. <laughs> it just loved so hard in a hard time period. In a symbiotic relationship, it is evolutionarily advantageous to keep your partner both happy and healthy, <laughs> just like Arya and I. Bye. So over hundreds of millions of years, mycorrhizal networks have evolved to be way more complicated than just a process of fixing phosphorus. In 1997, then-doctoral candidate Susan Simard published her thesis. She had gathered strong evidence for a radical concept. Facilitated by fungus, trees were talking to each other. They weren't just getting resources from fungi, they were sharing those resources among the other trees in the network, and in fact, actively directing them, depending on the needs of the other trees. After Simar got her PhD, it would be shown, for example, that a taller, older tree with leaves in the canopy would chemically sense that a smaller sapling in the shade wasn't getting enough nutrients, and carbon, sugars, and essential elements would be diverted to the sapling to help it. And it even goes deeper than this. Fungal connections allow trees to sense what network members they're related to, and they help their kin more than other trees. Mycelium can also act like a chemical defense grid. One plant attacked by aphids, for example, will trigger the whole network to release volatile compounds that attract aphids' predators. The Last of Us TV show, pivoting away from spores and more towards mycelium as a kind of infected network? Well, given that this is exactly what the single most prevalent symbiotic relationship on the planet actually does, I think the changes are both narratively interesting and entirely plausible. And infected communication up to a mile away, this makes sense too, fitting well within the largest fungal networks that we know of, which can be many square kilometers in size. And when the show goes out of its way to show mycelium growing underneath the skin of the infected, like when Ellie's cutting that one's head open to see if she can deal with death and how it's gonna, that makes sense too. Check this out. Look at how mycelium is literally infiltrating the muscles like other fungi would plants' roots. It's colonizing tissue inside and out to physically and chemically control the ants' movements. If this is what the show is trying to demonstrate with how the human infected are controlled, again, they must have a great science advisor in the writer's room, and I'm also available and you can call me and I'm not that expensive. An adaptation of a video game that is both critically acclaimed and makes changes that are both acclaimed and scientifically accurate? It's undeniable. The Last of Us has done something pretty rare. <coughs> <coughs> Until next time. <coughs> uh oh. <coughs> oh, sorry. Now exiting the facility. 
Thank you so much to the very nerdy staff at the facility for their direct and substantial support in the creation of this here video. If you want to join the facility, if you want to put on a fire resistant and chemically durable flannel, if you want to see videos early, if you want to join the private discord and ping me at all hours of the day, thanks, and have a monthly members only live stream with yours truly, go to patreon.com slash Kyle Hill and join the facility today. And hey, if you support us just enough, get your name on Aria here in every single video. Oh, lucky to be you. There's so many of you at this point. I don't even know how I'm gonna pad. There's a larger question to me with, uh, or kind of like a meta question. Why pivot away from spores and focus on mycelium? I think there's also a Hollywood production answer to this, you know, if you're in the biz. Um, Less spores on screen means less particle effects. And those particle effects, if you want to do them right for how uh, expensive they must be, it, it might bite into the budget of your show. And you might not want to have your actors be extensively in masks, which are hard to act in and nobody looks good in. Even though Pedro has worn a mask for an entire series before, I, I, I feel like they wanted to focus more on the actors and what they could bring to this beloved story through their character arcs and their, you know, and all that. And it's just more tension having, knowing that anywhere that you step, you could, you know, get some <laughs> Thanks for watching. <coughs> Must be something in the air.